Wow, this doesn't run so good, does it? Right here is the 1987 GMC V-Series half-ton four-wheel drive pickup. This one was made famous by saving Dalton and JD and Jim's lives when it was run into by a semi. Purpose of this video is to just look around this truck and see how good, how bad it is. There were guys on that video of his that were saying, oh man, this thing deserves to live on. And I know there'd be interest in that, but really it just depends on how good, how bad the truck is. So that's what we're gonna take a look at. Bed, pretty rusted out, that's bad. Cab corners, rocker panels, fenders, rusted out, they're bad. Main question on this is the frame. So they were hit on the driver's side and yep, there you can see it is bent. See the whole frame's bent right there. You've got the little tear. Now when you look down the side of this truck, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can catch that arc shape. So this whole vehicle's bananaed. Obviously the cab's bad. That rocker panel's buckled all the way into the floor. And no getting that door open. Now Dalton had told me after the wreck that this thing still ran and drove, but there'd been a hole punched in the oil filter. I actually crawled underneath and that filter's good. It doesn't have any residue or oil that show any signs of leaks. So I'm gonna grab a battery for this thing and see about starting it. But before I do that, I've got to get the fan out of the fan shroud. All right, now hold very still. This won't hurt a bit. So with the shroud now out of the way, grab that fan blade and spin it, verify that there's no obstruction, so we're good to go there. Expecting a little more, I did notice that the alternator belt is loose. This truck took a real jolt in that wreck. You can look down, kind of hard to see, but that front cross member is just bent and twisted around crazy curious thing the oil cap there is wedged between the core support and the steering box and I mean wedged how did it get all the way from over here down to there in the wreck it's crazy how much energy there is in something like that and the physics of all of it another thing I wanted to point out on this truck it would have been factory throttle body injected and so this is either not the original engine, would have come out of something earlier carbureted. It could just be that they took a four barrel iron manifold and stuck it on this old TBI engine. I'm not gonna get down in the weeds of researching that to really find out. Although you do see fuel pump block off plate down there. So that should be a clue to what we have here. Okay, alternator's tightened up, so we're good to go there. Kinda concerns me, he said this thing was leaking oil. I'm really, really hoping that as pretzeled as this frame is, that there's not some compromised area of the block where the impact of the accident would have cracked it. This one does have clamshell mounts, so that would be of some advantage, because I think there'd be a little bit of flex and bend to those before the engine would really get hurt. So time to grab a battery and we're gonna find out what we got. Now one way you can tell that this was a TBI truck 
is these little relays and solenoids up on the firewall. Of course, one's gone and been hacked apart. Another thing I notice on here, we do have an electric choke that seems to be hooked up and hopefully functional. So, in we go. Try and start this thing. Of course, driver's door being pinned all the way shut. Another couple details of the R and V series. You've got this style upholstery in the seat. The 86 and older, it was just more of a plane. Didn't have this little dip in it there. Of course, this is a foreshadowing of the 1988 style seat. Another detail of these trucks is you've got this chrome turn signal handle. That was new for 87 and it carried through 91. And for some reason, this is a really hard steering column to find. They're probably four or 500 bucks on eBay. All right, once to the floor, release. We got nothing. Something's messed up in here. Day two, yesterday was really not a good day. I had poison ivy and slept about two hours that night before. The insomnia really kicked in. I didn't feel very functional or competent or like I was really even safe to be out here. Still fighting lack of sleep, but keeping going. So one thing I did do is I chalked these wheels front and rear with this truck being bananaed the way that it is. It's got the steering column and everything kind of shifted sideways and the linkage I'm sure. So this is actually in reverse right now. It won't go all the way fully up into park. So I think I'm going to start it in the position that seems to be neutral and we'll go from there. The other thing I was really fighting was these battery cables and I just got frustrated and gave up and switched them just how the factory intended and that's to the side post so I got brand new cables run I got everything crimped for the body ground for the alternator power lead and it is time to hop in and try this old thing once again the electric fuel pump there Hadn't even hit record. Just cranked this thing and it fired right up. Now, not running the best. I have got to see if there's oil leaking. Wow, this doesn't run so good, does it? It's got a real misfire. So it's in reverse now. I need to make some kind of mark on here. That's neutral. That engine is not happy. Almost dying out. Obviously 
that engine is not happy. I looked here where that cab firewall shifted over. There's a place where it's the edge of the booster mount that it looked like it had those plug wires pinched or maybe caught and severed, but I pulled them all out of the way and they're still good. Something is causing this engine to really misfire and I'm not sure exactly what that is. So I don't want to drive it a whole bunch and hurt it, but I'll probably at least take these chocks out and put this thing in reverse and at least try and get it to move forward and back and just verify that it's not got anything cracked in the transmission or transfer case and anything that's going to just be dumping all the fluid out and cooking the thing. But I got the instructions figured out. So it's got to be pulled up to reverse in order for the ignition switch to go forward to start versus there and there's neutral. At this moment, I had a real flashback to Trailer Park Boys. Drive doesn't work, but third does. Neutral is park, reverse is second. If you want to use reverse, put it in drive. This one wasn't going to be quite that complicated. Now, since it's starting in gear, that steering isn't gonna work, it's just bound there. Brakes are still good. I hit my fence if I go any further. Neutral, drive. Smooths out with RPM. Not sure what that exactly means. I'm more of a body guy and a parts guy and a tow guy. Not super, super mechanical. So, at least that's the condition that the truck is in as of right now. All right, so I've come underneath here and see we've got a puddle of dripping engine oil. That's not good. Oh boy. Okay, see that's leaking. Dalton said that there was a leak at the filter. But looking up here, where that's all pinched together. I know there's a lot of divided opinion on the top post versus side post question. And I'll just give you the reasons why I like side post. Number one, the post configuration is always the same. So you can take any side post battery out of any side post vehicle and put it in another one. Top post, you got to worry about, oh, well, where did they put the posts? Are my cables going to stretch? Can I turn the battery around? And that just becomes a boondoggle and a hassle. But with side post, you know you drop that thing in boom boom you're ready to go number two reason is I have never seen a side post get what's called black post which is where there's a leak and that acid comes out and instead of that post being bright shiny lead turns it black whenever that happens you get all kinds of corrosion on your cables and it's just never a good thing and those batteries, they'll give up pretty quick after that seal's broke and they get black posted. The other thing is you don't have to mess around with cables as far as spreading them, splitting them to get them to come off. The side post, you just grab either a 5 16 or a 9 16 You know those are the sizes because they're based on the thread size. You just take the thing apart, boom, ready to go. If for some reason these get marred and you can't get the wrench on there, 
there's always a bit of a shoulder there you can grab with the vice grip and they'll come right out. To answer the question, can this truck be saved? Absolutely not. The frame is buckled, the cab is buckled, and you can see it's got the axle alignment way off. This truck was straight when I brought it in here, and just in going backwards and forward, it's already turned to this degree. I really didn't move the steering wheel, so that tells you just how bananaed and how shot this thing really is. But the bigger answer to the question is, there's a lot of good parts here. There's a lot of things that can come off of it to help other trucks live. So in that case, call it an organ donor, I suppose. We'll have Dalton's brand new tires on it. One of these was destroyed, it poked the sidewall, but I did order another one online, so I've got the matching set back and put them on something that uses 16s.